Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today is uh, the first week of May, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about drought strategies for early spring grazing when you don't get any rain. And uh, basically, where we're at here in mid-Missouri, we've went uh, March and April, and we've got four tenths of an inch. And now we, you know, we're hitting extremely warm temperatures. It's, I think it's supposed to get almost 90 today. Um, yesterday was 87. I mean, the wind's blowing. It's just like, you know, it's, it's a furnace out there. And uh, so some of the things you've got to keep in mind is just because we're in the spring flush, that doesn't mean you're guaranteed to grow a ton of grass that'll basically maintain your farm through the growing season. And so I think an early strategy of, you know, allocating and measuring your resources, your your feed or, you know, your forage ahead of you is a good practice. And so, you know, we're marking, you're marking behind where you've been, drive a stake, you know, draw it and take a magic marker and mark the date. And when you were there and the inch, the inches of regrowth, uh, the inches of growth that you left behind and then go back and measure that about every week to see if the plants are getting any regrowth at all. And um, that's a good, that's a really good measuring tool to kind of see where you're at. Otherwise you're, you're just kind of going blind. Um, right now, um, because we do have an extremely dry area here, it seems like, you know, everybody's getting rain. It's just, that's the way it is sometimes. You know, the rains went north, we just finished our grazing school yesterday and there's people reporting they had two inches of rain south of us and some people got 2.5 inches north of us. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, it's our turn. It's our turn to be in a drought. So, you know, I, I give the code, there's nothing wrong with, uh, you know, praying for rain and uh, I do that as well, but it's not a good management strategy. Um, you have to manage for what you know. And we know we haven't had any rain. We know the plants aren't growing back very quickly. And some of them aren't growing back at all. And so we're doing several different things to help mitigate that. One is <clears throat> the, the bull farm where we had all the bulls at. We've made that full rotation this spring, just basically taking the top thirds of the plants off. And when we got back around, it was about 30 days. Uh, those plants were not ready to graze again. Uh, they were still uh, flat, you know, they were flat on the top. They didn't have a point on them. When they're flat, that's a good indicator that you need to give that plant more time. So what we did is we hauled the, the bulls to the Judy farm. We're going to let that bull farm rest. And uh, the Judy farm was recovered because we hit it about a month ago with our cow herd. And because we didn't take it down short, we gave them bigger areas. And we were trying to get across all of our farms quickly it really paid huge dividends. So we've got a ton of forage up here for the bulls, but you know, I'm, I'm looking in what we have available right now. So I'm making management decisions based on what I know. And so last week I did the video on our steers, uh, selling them and they all sold within well, less than 24 hours. We've got all of our steers sold. So those are all going to be loaded out, uh, on Tuesday morning. So we'll sort those out of the cow herd uh, tomorrow. And uh, also all the bulls will be leaving our farm. The, the two-year-olds are all pre-sold and those will all be picked up June 1st. So basically by June 1st, um, this is May 7th. Um, in three weeks, we're gonna be getting rid of about 20% of our total cow herd population. Cat, well, I'll say the, the beef herd, because the, the bulls and steers are leaving. Folks, one of the things you got to remember is steers don't reproduce. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to preserve your precious resources, grass, and that needs to go to your cows that are calving. Our, we're calving right now, and you, one thing people kind of forget about uh, is cows. Well, and our sheep, our sheep are lambing right now. Um, their nutrient requirements, forage uh, requirements double. They double when they, when they calve or lamb. So let's say you have a hundred cows out there and they all calved in let's say a two week period. 
they're going to eat twice as much forage. And I think people forget about that. And uh, next thing you know, you're out of grass. So what we're doing is we're preserving our, our forage and we're going to keep that for our, our breeding animals, the females. And the steers, they've got to go to town. And so, or, you know, they're sold. And so, of course, we didn't sell them to town. We sold them to another, <coughs> excuse me, another grass-fed producer that has had plenty of rain. And uh, he has, you know, very uh, good source of forage. So he's not hurting. And typically right now, folks, we would be uh, basically understocked because of all the spring growth, but it didn't happen. And that's why, you know, you can't go buy a calendar. Everybody says, well, how often do you move your cows? You know, every day or every two days or twice a day or whatever. How often do you come back? It all depends on your, on your rainfall. We haven't had any. And even though they've got rain forecasted, <laughs> a weatherman's got a great job. He can forecast rain and be wrong, and he still has a job. It's crazy. All last week, uh, there was four days there in a row they forecasted rain. I think we got 20 drops. Every day. Every day they forecast rain, and they missed it every day. And this week's the same way. They've got a uh, 40%, 50% chance. So what I'm go where I'm going with that is don't plan on a weatherman <laughs> to bail you out. Um, you know what you need to do. You know how to measure the forage that's out in front of you. Hopefully you do. Um, if you don't, uh, you need to learn that. Um, so that's, that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're destocking some of the males. And, um, we're, of course, we're keeping, you know, our breeding bulls for our own cow herd. And we're also keeping the 2021 yearling bulls. Because that will be our bull crop next year that we sell to other producers and you know they're not eating that much they're they're you know basically yearling bull calves so they're like 450 pound calves so they're not going to be eating the amount of forage that a, a pregnant cow or an older bull would be eating so with that uh you know we're we're managing with, with what we have and we know what we have out in front of us and so we need we need more time so with that i'm going to go ahead and sign out of here just want everybody to know, you know, you can't stick your head down in the sand when you're in a drought. You need to act. And the sooner you act to help take some of the pressure off of your pastures, the less animals that you're going to have to sell. If you procrastinate and just keep waiting, well, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to rain tomorrow, it's going to rain tomorrow. And it doesn't rain tomorrow. You've let animals in your herd <clears throat> that should have been sold graze that grass, and now you're in peril. You may have to sell some of your cows. And those are cows that can give you baby calves <clears throat> that is going to be your future cow herd and, you know, keeping back your, your best heifers and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we're looking at already making a list of some cows. We're going to be selling some cows, some cow-calf pairs to lighten up the stocking rate if we don't get a rain in June or even in the next couple of weeks. So you just got to constantly keep looking at your current herd. Don't buy hay. You can't buy in hay and go through a drought. You can't feed hay through a drought. Well, you can, but you may lose your whole cow herd because at the, you don't know when that drought's going to end. I mean, this drought we're in now, it could last all summer long. I mean, who knows? It could last a year. We don't know. So you, you do know what you have available. So manage for what you have. And, and you got a plan, folks. You just can't stick your head in the sand. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. And uh, we're going to be sorting off some uh, steers tomorrow. And uh, we're going to move forward. And hopefully we do get some rain. But if we don't, we're still going to have adequate grass because we've, we've, we've set a plan in motion. Folks, have a good one. And uh, we'll see you all down the road. Take care. Oh, and hit that subscribe button on the way out. Thank you.